Hello everyone, this video is on grandiosity, arrogance, narcissism and how we can have compassion for it because there's a lot of shaming and finger pointing and hysteria going on around the subject because there's a lot of people who have developed narcissistic tendencies just through the modern age, just through the pressure of having to perform, of not feeling good enough or secure in the family unit, of not feeling like they are okay as they are or lovable as they are. And those messages can be verbal or nonverbal that they've received from multiple people, from the culture, from friends, from family, from even a lineage connection, because the idea of a narcissist, for example, just being separate from society or from its family unit is is incorrect because we inherit everything from the collective consciousness and from the consciousness that's been shared through generations and generations and there's maybe been some suppression in the consciousness through trauma and war and loss and horror and so when we have individuals who are hurt and who are hurting and their coping mechanism to feel like they have a right to be alive is to pump up a false sense of self to think that they're the best and to construct an identity which cannot be criticized, is not open to feedback there's a reason for that. There's a reason why people feel the need to do that. And in a capitalist society or in a society that values you based on how much money you have, how much sex is available that you can get, how much um, even spiritual progress you have, or the endless ways that the human beings objectify one another, dehumanize one another. What do we expect? And, and, and at the core of an arrogant personality or a narcissistic personality, whether it's covert, or whether it's overt, like in your face, I'm amazing, or oh, poor me, I'm a victim, whatever way it goes, at the core of it is a sense of being totally insignificant, totally unvaluable. And if somebody has had a life experience and felt a sense of total emptiness, total insignificance. That's unbearable. It's unbearable to stay in a body that's been disconnected from the totality of who it actually is beyond that and is interacting with other humans or is inherited as a lot of pain to survive without that construct. So there's an inevitability to it. And we shouldn't be kicking people who are down. We should also be aware of what's going on and take care of ourselves and make sure we have boundaries and, and, and make sure we don't stick our head in the sand and take precautions. But we also while interacting with people who are hurting and know that they're just little kids that tried to survive having a human body in a world that's de-stressing. 
And when we're interacting with them, these wounded children, and the wounded children turn into broken adults who often have difficulty keeping jobs, keeping marriages, um, keeping their mental sanity intact, or maybe they are highly functional and they go into organizations and take on leadership positions, which keeps them busy, great. But know that they're wounded children and in order to to be around people like that know that even though the tendency may be very exacerbated in other people to be selfish there's also selfish tendencies in all of us just by virtue of having a human body and being a human notice the selfish tendencies within you within yourself just so there's a bit of relatability and if you're thinking oh i don't have any selfish tendencies then notice that that's delusional because we do <laughs> we're wired to survive and, and and there's there's part of our brain that that will trample other people to survive and we all have that so notice how that comes out maybe it comes out in the form of envy Maybe it comes out in the form of rage or competitiveness. It comes out. Some people act on it. Some people have a certain amount of humility to share their vulnerabilities and their weaknesses with others, which is progress. To own up to imperfection is progress. To deny imperfection is delusional. And... Um, I, I, it doesn't matter whether you're head of a spiritual organization, you're not perfect. It doesn't matter whether you're an advanced meditator, you're not perfect. So it's not like we get to a place where we are perfect and we no longer maybe have to suffer from these impulses, these impulses may remain for a while when the consciousness expands within us it'll become more manageable and for some people maybe won't come up as much or if it does come up it doesn't dysregulate us and we know that we're not that anyway. We're beyond our personality and our mind. And that's an important point too, to know that everybody the, that we interact with exists on multiple planes of existence. They exist, yes, they have a body, yes, they, they have a personality, yes, parts of them might be disordered, yes, you know, they have a history, yes, they have trauma, yes, um, sometimes you're able to talk to people and they can absorb information in a, in a sane conversation can happen. Sometimes they're de-stressing and you can't have a conversation without these pushbacks. <laughs> And those pushbacks can be gaslighting or denying another person's reality or pretending everything's okay or shaming the other person or playing like a victim or whatever. There's these pushbacks and sometimes there can be a lot of pushing if the person's really very stressed. And also people have very stressful lives in the modern age where they have to try and please everyone and be everything. And if you imagine a single mom that feels that she has to go out and work and then look after the kids and then maybe have a some kind of a sex life and then has to date and then has to also maybe figure out who she is. And I mean, it's just, that's just one example, but We don't need 
to do anything to have the right to exist. We're always significant. And so part of healing from grandiosity, from narcissistic tendencies, is to understand that you are valuable beyond what your body looks like, beyond how much money you have in the bank, beyond whether you're deemed useful in society, beyond all of the trauma and everything that's happened to you. And I don't think we can really treat or help people if we look, if we put our attention on them and we're disgusted by them. Because that will just, it'll just repeat. We're never going to heal if when we perceive the other as disgusting and wrong and we have to run away. Yes, we can set a boundary, but when we're setting a boundary, it can be a physical boundary if necessary, which sometimes is absolutely needed. But it can never really be a boundary into our heart space because whoever you throw out of your heart space damages you. And there's a process to getting to the point where you no longer need to throw other people out of your heart space. You can keep them in your heart space while understanding that they're struggling and they need help. It's not your job necessarily to get them the help, but in order to take all of humanity with all of its dysfunction and pull it back into your heart space, knowing that they're no different from you. Now, there is a lot of talk about narcissists being alien and different. And that's that's their personality construct that's different. That's their coping strategy that's different. But beyond the personality, and the personality is only one little thing about a human being, beyond that, they're the same. And so that's why meditation can help because otherwise I'm just talking and it doesn't really land because you maybe think, well, that's just words. They, they're very different to me and they don't think like me and they've hurt me and, and I'm traumatized because of it. But ultimately, that's why meditating in groups is so powerful because even if everybody's arguing and everybody has different political views and you could have a sociopath, you could have somebody with an official diagnosis of NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, you could have, um, you know, somebody from South Africa, somebody from, I don't know why I said that, my mind's maybe thinking I need to go to South Africa, I have been thinking of that. Somebody from India who lives in the Himalayas in a cave, you could just have any random, random, random group of people and they could just have totally different life experiences, totally different personality types, total different lineages of stress. Bring them together meditate, we move beyond all of that stuff, connect on a deeper level. And then when you come out of the meditation, the energy is different and nobody's arguing anymore. And I've seen that happen many, many times. It's really interesting where I'd go into a meditation group 
And yeah, it would be happen to be transcendental meditation groups. And there would be some tension between different people and there's lots of different personality types. That all is completely transcended in the group meditation. And then after the meditation, there's a real stillness and there's a real ability to connect with everybody beyond their stuff and to be able to set boundaries without judgment or hate or disgust and to keep people in the heart space. And so you don't have to mood make and pretend that you love people that you don't or pretend that you've forgiven people that you haven't, but just know that it's possible and that's where we're going. We're going to be able to heal through compassion and non-judgment and the compassion and the non-judgment, it exists in a realm outside of the personality, outside of the body in that transcendental realm. The still transcendental realm, it has a certain intelligence and that intelligence is woken up within us and it contains compassion, it contains non-judgment, it contains the forgiveness, it contains endless possibilities of all of that healing stuff within it. And it just gets activated. And anything within us, any judgment, any lack of compassion will be shown to us and is now being shown to us. So it's always fun to go on YouTube because whatever topic of discussion at the minute, it seems to be narcissism. It's showing the wounding. It's showing there's a genuine concern about how society is going to survive if people are in power who are very, very grandiose and narcissistic. And then there's also a de-stressing going on where there's people angry and hateful and confused and harmed by these tendencies because these tendencies within people they do they, they cause a lot of harm and they can cause a lot of sickness and they can cause a lot of divorce and family disruptions and wars so there's a lot of emotions that are coming up and that's good it's all good because then you can just look at it and see what needs to be healed and heal it. And so I'll be doing a lot more videos on this subject and I'll be probably downloading a load more insights as I continue my own private meditation practice daily and I will share them on the channel. And for all of the mental health practitioners out there who are doing this invaluable work of trying to figure out how to help people who are wounded little children. I hope they also can get the help that they need because sometimes when you're busy trying to help other people, you can forget about yourself. And so I hope that they find their support network too. And if you are watching this video and you have been hurt by selfish tendencies in other people, my heart goes out to you. And I pray that you find the inner resources to heal and to pull that person back into your heart space and to be able to set boundaries with them and to understand them beyond their personality and to ultimately just transcend it all and be yourself because sometimes we forget parts of ourselves when we're interacting with other dysregulated people. We can 
get so triggered by those people that we forget who we are and end up acting like them. And there's a transference going on because the person who's suffering wants company. They want you to to feel the way they're feeling. They're kind of like little kids that are like, I'm hurting here. Take my pain away. And one way of getting their pain taken away is by putting it somewhere, putting it on somebody else. And so some people have the capacity to hold the pain that other people put on them, give to them, and other people, it can just be too much. And so I also pray that people have the ability to step away when they need to. And my neck is hurting right now, so I'm going to ste step away and do some stretching. And I'll post more videos soon. Thank you. Bye.